Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have some big news to discuss. Intel and AMD are teaming up. Yep, you heard that right, this isn't a joke. Now, we're used to pretty fiery head-to-head -head battles between AMD and Intel, and this year in particular, there have been plenty of those. However, it was just announced by Intel that future Core Series processors will have Radeon graphics inside. This partnership between AMD and Intel has been rumored for quite some time now, certainly well over a year, and while some were convinced it was on, uh, it just seemed a little too crazy to be true, but despite the odds, it's very true. As unlikely as it seemed that Intel would work directly with AMD, the idea really made sense. Intel's integrated graphics are terrible, if I'm honest, and after countless years of development, they've really made very little headway. Although severely lacking in the CPU department, AMD's own APUs have provided significantly better graphics performance when compared to anything Intel's been able to produce, and this has been particularly uh, problematic for Intel's mobile products. Therefore, Intel's bit the bullet and has decided to employ AMD Radeon graphics for their 8th generation H-series core chips in the hope of bringing top-tier gaming to thin and light notebook PCs. A key bit of technology to making this possible is Intel's embedded multi-die interconnect bridge, or EMIB for short. I'm sure AMD probably have an internal code name for it. Perhaps it's super glue. <laughs> Generally, CPUs are made using a single continuous slab of silicon, which includes everything from the processing cores to the integrated graphics. Imbib now makes it possible to connect multiple dies. Uh, for example, you could connect a 10 nanometer die with a 14 nanometer die, and perhaps even a 22 nanometer die. Essentially, this technology allows for a more modular design, a bit like AMD's Infinity Glue. I mean, <coughs> I mean fabric. Granted, multi-chip packages aren't anything new, but EMIB makes it possible at a much higher bandwidth. And again, this is much like what we've seen through AMD's own Infinity Fabric. As far as we can tell at this point, EMIB is only being used to connect the Radeon GPU to the HBM2 memory stack. Uh, more on HBM in a moment. How the GPU connects to the CPU cores hasn't yet been revealed by AMD, but if their illustration proves to be accurate, then it seems that the distance between the CPU and the GPU is simply too great for EMIB to be implemented. You'd have to assume that the PCI bus is being used here, and this is a proven method that provides plenty of bandwidth, and well, this is how discrete GPUs in your normal computer connect to your CPU. And I'd say the reason why the distance on the package is so great between the CPU and the GPU is to help manage the thermal output. The fact that these upcoming mobile core processors from Intel will leverage the power of AMD's Radeon technology is a big deal, but doing so while using HBM2 memory is a seriously big deal. AMD's own upcoming Ryzen-based APUs won't even take advantage of HBM2 memory, rather they'll make use of DDR4 system memory. So this means AMD's own graphics will likely perform better in Intel CPUs, thanks to the increased memory bandwidth. Of course, all this is yet to be seen, but in any case, it will likely end up being a win-win situation for AMD. Although Nvidia currently owns the largest chunk of the discrete GPU market, the biggest player in the GPU market is actually Intel. Thanks to their embedded or integrated GPUs, Intel owns the vast majority of the market, around 70% in fact. And this is due to the fact that all their mainstream desktop and mobile CPUs ship with Intel HD graphics inside. While gamers might not use it, it's still there anyway. With Intel now shifting to AMD graphics for their mobile parts, this will drastically increase AMD's market share and will likely boost its mind share as well. The likely result of this will be that more game developers will probably start to prioritize Radeon graphics. Part of the agreement between Intel and AMD is that Intel buys the chips from AMD and AMD provides full driver support, just as they do with their console customers. As you no doubt are aware, display drivers play a crucial role. At the most basic level, they ensure that the operating system can communicate with the graphics card and vice versa. But they've become increasingly complex over the years, and now they require constant updates, like monthly updates, to support new games and technology. Intel's own graphics technology hasn't just been lacking on the hardware front, but also on the software side of things. It's just less of an issue given that you can't really play modern games on Intel's HD graphics due to a lack of rendering power. 
It's not yet clear if Intel's going to completely drop their own integrated graphics from the chips that have the Radeon graphics, or if they'll just keep it around as a low-powered option that can be switched to when not handling intense 3D tasks. It seems likely that Intel won't ditch their own graphics technology and instead just keep it around to handle things like accelerated video playback, for example. Saving as much power as possible in a mobile device is obviously a priority, and powering up a much more complex GPU along with the HBM2 memory just for basic tasks probably wouldn't make that much sense. There's still a lot of things that we don't yet know about these upcoming mobile processors, but we do know they're on the way, and we do know that they should arrive in the first quarter of 2018. If this new partnership is successful, then it will certainly put NVIDIA in a very precarious position. Things continue to get more and more interesting in the CPU and GPU space, and I can't wait to see what 2018 brings. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.